right, we will we'll go back on the record then in State versus Brooks. Appearances are as they were this morning. Um, do we have Ms. Gajewski available? All right, bring her in and we'll bring the jury in as soon as she's up here for her cross-exam. State that I do consent to that name, nor do I know any individual by that name. Your lack of consent is noted for the record. All right, Ms. Kajewski, if you would please make your way back to the witness stand. And as soon as you are there, I will have the jury brought out. All right, go ahead. On the record before the jury comes out, um, I would like to direct your honor to a case, United States versus Cotton, 535. Mr. Brooks, if you have a motion, you need to put it in writing, and then I will address it. I'm not going to deal with any oral motions right now. So if you're asking me to reconsider something, you need to follow the proper procedure. What is the proper procedure, your honor? I've told you repeatedly what a motion is. So. And if it's a reconsideration, 806.07 is the statute I would direct your attention to. It's, it's not a reconsideration. It's just bringing up the subject matter jurisdiction again. Which Sir, I've already it. dealt with this repeatedly. So any further times you want me to address it, you need to put it <coughs> in writing for the court to consider a proper motion with the relief that you're requesting, the legal basis, and the facts upon which you are relying. I have that here, Your Honor. Not just simply a case. I want a motion. I've put in several motions that have yet to be Sir, answered. I've already addressed them. The jury's on its way out. I'm not going to delay the start of this cross-examination for this argument yet again. It's not I've already argument. addressed it. The fact that it's the afternoon doesn't mean I need to address it again. The jury's coming out. It's going to continue right. to be brought up. It's, it's going to continue to be brought up, Your Honor. It hasn't been proven that you have jurisdiction, that this court has jurisdiction. I think it's relevant. Subject matter jurisdiction can't be forfeited or waived. You know that. By not answering, Your Honor. Please, the jury's coming out. By not answering, Your Honor, you're agreeing to a tactic agreement. Is that a judicial determination that you don't have to answer? I'll take that as a yes. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, Mr. Brooks, you may question the witness if you have any questions for her. I don't consent to being called that name, as I stated before. I will note that, like that noted the for the record. can question the witness, then. Is that noted for the record, Your Honor? Ask your questions, please. Is it noted for the record, Your Honor? As you testified to earlier, you were present at the Christmas parade on November 21st of 2021. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you remember about how long you intended to be at the parade? Just until we finished the route. It was a few exhibits that you stated on record that you weren't familiar with seeing. Would that be fair to say? Uh, once clarified, I did say that I remembered seeing them. So you, you saw those videos before today? Yes. About how many times do, do you recall seeing them before today? Just once. Do you recall who showed them to you? Um, yes. You stated for the record and for the jury? Can you repeat that? Can you state who showed you the videos for the record and for the jury? Um, yeah, the state. And who you who would you be referring to when you say the state? 
Um, the three you seated next to you. Are you referring to the, the opposite table next to me? Yes. Let the record reflect that. She identified the three prosecutors sitting at the prosecution table. No objection. The record will so reflect. Do you recall knowing if you would possibly be called to testify? Yes. Were you expecting to testify? Yes, I got a letter in the mail. Do you recall if that letter was a subpoena? Yes, it was a subpoena. You frequently uh, refer to the vehicle as the car, the car. Um, do you recall those statements? Yes. So for clarification, what type of vehicle did you see that day? Was it a car? It was a Ford SUV. And how were you able to determine the make and model of the vehicle? Objection. Not describe the model. Rounds. Um, overruled. She may answer um, the question. So um, when I first saw it, I made a point to figure out what car it was, not the license plate, and I knew it was either um, either that um, an escape or a mercury and then as the vehicle got closer to me i saw the ford emblem that's how i knew it was a ford and during those determinations of the make and model of the vehicle did you catch a description of the driver no i did not Any reason why you would be more focused on the make and model of the vehicle instead of who was driving the vehicle? I can't tell you why. I just made sure I knew what the vehicle was. And you didn't try to uh, see if you can spot a license plate at any time? It all happened way too fast. So would it be fair to say that it happened fast enough for you to not be able to make, uh, make out the model and make of the vehicle? No, I knew exactly what it was. But not exactly who was driving the vehicle? No, I did not look who was driving it, just the make. You stated that you observed uh, some girls from your dance team in the hospital. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you stated that a few of them were laying on the ground? Yes. Any, any idea why they be, would be laying on the ground in the hospital? Because there was so many people, there wasn't enough room. So people were standing, sitting, and laying on the ground because the rooms were overflowed. Were they being attended to at that time? Nope, because there was uh, too many people. Did you recall feeling like maybe they should have been attended to, seeing as how they may have been seriously injured? The nurses were attending to who needed it um, immediately. The nurses were doing the best they could. So it would be fair to say that the girls that you observed on the ground weren't of immediate concern to the nurses at that time? At that time, they weren't. Were you injured in any way during this incident? I was not. And you testified earlier to uh, the approximate speed of the vehicle. Do, do you recall what your answer was? Yeah, about 55 miles per hour. And how were you able to come to that determination? Um, Cause I've drove for a couple years now and that's just the number that came to my head because when I drive I know what 55 feels like and I know what 25 feels like and 
that was just my best guess. So it would be fair to say that you were making an assumption. You didn't know for sure. Nope. Yeah, that was just my best guess. to a young woman by the name of Sam. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And what relation do you have to Sam? Is she just part of the dance group or close friend? Or? Um, yeah, she's part of the dance group, but I became super close with her ever since I started working there. Do you recall seeing her struck by the vehicle? No. <laughs> Do you remember where she was at the time that you saw the vehicle pass you? Yes, she was um, on the front left side if you're looking towards the truck that was in our group. She was on the left side in front, first girl. Would it be fair to say that from that angle that you would be able to see her if she was struck? I was turned the other way. She was behind my back. So you don't know for sure where she was at when the vehicle passed you? I do. She was in her formation that I had put her in. Do you know if anyone was uh, standing there or in that position with her at that time? She has her own spot and um, there was girls behind her and next to her, but she would have been the only dancer in her spot. So it would have been people in her general area, but not directly next to her. Yeah, they have space in between all of them. Do you remember what you did immediately after the vehicle passed you? Yep, I ran to Alice and I picked her up immediately. In regards to your dance team, did you observe anyone struck? I just remember seeing um, bodies in the air, but I can't say I remember seeing a vehicle hit them. I remember seeing bodies in the air and on the ground. So at that point, it would be fair to say that you didn't know if the people that were on the ground or in the air or whatnot were in fact struck by a vehicle. Well, I did know it was the vehicle because I turned around and I saw the vehicle coming towards them. And then I think I blacked out until they actually were in the air and on the ground. By blacked out, what do you mean by that? State that what that means for the jury and for the record. So I can't see anything, but I can hear it. So when I say blackout, I mean I can't visualize it, but I can hear it happening. Was that the first time that you ever had a blackout? Yeah. So it's never happened before that day? Never. Any idea what caused it on that occasion? 
No. Stress. Shock. And you stated that you um, got into a uh, ambulance and with someone who was struck and then left the parade at that point. A squad car, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. A, a squad. Mm -hmm. You left at that point. <laughs> yep. Do you recall about what time that was? No. Do you recall how long you were uh, with? The person being transported at that time? Um, no, I wasn't worried about time. Do you recall if anyone was walking? directly next to you at the time of the incident? Um, I was walking next to the girls on my team that got struck. Do you recall walking next to Sam or <laughs> Sam walking next to you? No, she was um, behind me. Do you recall making the statement that, and this is, I'm guessing, in a summary report given to uh, Detective Schwartz. Do you recall being interviewed by Detective Schwartz? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you recall making the statement that Samantha was walking next to you? Uh, no, I don't recall that. Do you recall making a statement that you did not have enough time to tell Sam to move? Yes. And this was the same Sam that you just testified that you did not see sh struck, correct? Yeah. Yes, I didn't see her hit. So it would be fair to say that You made the statement that you didn't have enough time to tell her to move, but didn't actually see what happened to her. Because she was on the same side as me, and that's why I was saying I didn't have enough time to tell her to move, but I wasn't next to her. Any idea what may have stopped you from being able to see what happened? Because I blacked out. At the point that you blacked out, at that point you didn't see anyone struck. Would that be fair to say? I don't remember exactly the vehicle hitting, but I just remember bodies flying. I think I kind of try to block it out. Do you recall making a statement that everything happened so fast? Yes. But not fast enough for you to identify the, the vehicle? Nope. I remember exactly what the vehicle was. Do you recall if the vehicle had any damage at that point? I was only... Um, 
paying attention to what kind of make it was because I could see the body of it was an SUV and like I said I thought it was either the make with the Mercury or a Ford and so I was just paying attention to the emblem when the grill got closer and I saw it was a Ford. I wasn't looking for any damage. About how close would you estimate the vehicle came to you? I don't know. Did it get close to you? I don't know. I blacked out. Do you remember what side of the road you were on when you blacked out? Yeah, I was on... Um, if you are looking at the truck, I was on the left side. So if you're going walking in the parade, I was on the left side. But I had turned around, and so I was on the right side because I was looking at the vehicle. So at what point did your memory go fuzzy? Um, so I turned around, and I saw a car or an SUV, and I told myself, you're crazy, you don't, you don't see that. And then all of a sudden, I don't remember anything. I can hear, I can hear it, and then after, I remember seeing the bodies. So I would say I blacked out from when I saw the vehicle to after it passed. Any idea how long that may have been, roughly, if you recall? A second. So pretty much like the snap of a finger. Yeah, because it went by so fast. And from your recollection, that was quick enough for you to miss anybody being struck? I blacked out, so I didn't see them physically get hit. Outside of uh, Detective Schwartz, um, did you... Uh, were you interviewed by any other law enforcement? No, I only gave that statement, and that was it. Um, what about at the hospital? Were you interviewed at the hospital? No, I was not. Uh, did you call yourself to make a report about what you saw that, that evening? No, I uh, went and gave the statement right after I left the hospital, and that was it. Did you do any follow-up to see if your report, report was received by anyone in law enforcement? No. Did anybody from law enforcement contact you about the statement that you gave? No. Do you recall at any time reading or seeing a complaint in this matter? No. Do you recall at any time filing any claim in this matter? No. Are you saying with the police department? Yes, with the police department. Yeah, no, I just gave a statement and that was it. Would you consider yourself a party to this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Do you recall if you were contacted by the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Um, overall, she may answer. Can you um, say who the plaintiff is? I'm asking you, do, are you aware of the plaintiff? Were you contacted by the plaintiff at, at any time? I don't know um, what the plaintiff is. The plaintiff would be who, whoever is bringing the claim for the charges in the matter. So not, um, then yeah. Objection. Yeah, yeah, what, you you were contacted by the plaintiff? Objection. She answered yes. I will answer right. grounds. Objection, hold on. Objection, move to strike. Grounds. Legal analysis. Grounds. 
and the defendant has testified. Um, I'll sustain the objection. I'll grant the request to strike uh, the question and the answer for the reasons given by the state. Uh, you may rephrase if you'd like. Who were you contacted about testifying? Um, the state. And that, I'm assuming the state of Wisconsin, correct? Um, I just know them as a state right there. Right there as in referring to the prosecution yeah. table? Correct. Let the record show that she identified the state as the three attorneys at the prosecution table. No objection. Record will still reflect. And do you recall having a conversation with the state? Yes. Would it be fair to say that you would identify the state as the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. No. Grounds. Sustained. Have you ever had any interactions with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. Do you see the plaintiff in the courtroom today? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. Do you even know if there is a plaintiff? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. So as far as you know, in your opinion, who would you say is the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Were you present at the parade with any family that day? No. Just one second. <coughs> and when you visited the hospital, how did you learn of the injuries to any of your uh, dance team partners? Um, which hospital are you referring to? Um, I only heard you say Memorial. You might have said it too. I think you said Children's one time too. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, that's correct. Um, um, I guess I would be referring to Memorial. Um, so the only injury, um, well, not even injury. I only knew um, Julia had something wrong with her brain at the time because they saw spinal fluid coming out of her nose. And were you told that directly from a doctor? I heard them um, freaking out and rushing her to a CT scan because I was right next to her um, helping them as she seized and vomited. So you overheard with, from the nurses what the diagnosis was? Yes. What about for um, Sam? 
Are you referring to the night of? Yes. Uh, when uh, I'm guessing you saw her at some point that, that night. I did not see her that night. Uh, did you see her at any point? I did. Um, I was there at the hospital the first day she was able to have a visitor. And were you told directly by uh, medical professionals at that time that you were able to see her of any possible injuries? I wasn't told by them. Um, she actually called me. Can I strike that answer for hearsay, Your Honor? No, he asked the question. But the answer was hearsay. But you asked the question. In the days after the incident, um, did you have quite a few uh, interactions with the dance team? Yeah, we um, tried to keep ourselves busy and we did a lot of things together. Did you, uh, did you attend any visuals or any memorials or anything like that? Yes, I did. Would you stay for the record and for the jury how many? Um, I believe it was on Monday I went to that vigil. And that would be the only one that you attended? Yeah, that was the only one they had. Were you aware of uh, um, things set up uh, financially for the victims? Can you repeat that? Were you aware of any, any uh, for example, like GoFundMes or, or uh, donations or anything for the victims? Were you aware of anything like that going on in the days after the incident? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. You yourself uh, donate to any causes associated with the incident? I did not. Are you still currently uh, a member of the dance team? Can you um, tell me which one you're referring to? Um, the, what is it, stream dance team? Yeah, I am um, not. I do not work there anymore. And was that decision made by the incident or was it just a personal decision? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. You testified earlier to uh, having the blackout and that being the first time that that happened. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Have you had any blackouts any time since that day? No. First and only time would be that day. Correct. 
No further questions. Yes, thank you. Ms. Kajewski, with respect to that blackout, uh, you testified that you don't have a visual memory mm -hmm. of the SUV actually striking any girls that day. Is that right? Correct. You testified, however, that you remember what it sounded like. Mm -hmm. Describe that, that. Yes, sorry. Um, yes, so yeah. it sounded like um, those big orange construction cones just being hit. That's what I remember it as. You do have a visual memory of the immediate aftermath of the strike? I do. And, and what is that memory? Jason. Hearsay. Let me answer. It's overruled. Um, just pure chaos, shoes everywhere, palms everywhere, bodies, people screaming, running around, just chaos. When asked on cross-examination what caused your blast blackout, you said stress and shock. you remember giving that testimony? Yes. At any time in your life before November 21st of 2021, had you ever witnessed an SUV drive through a group of young women? Objection. No. Hearsay. Overruled. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. No. What about any time since November 21st, 2021? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. No. <coughs> That's all we have. Thank you. Thank you. You may step down. She may. Thank you. Paul Jamie Sutton. Good afternoon, Ms. Sutton. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. She's right here. Oh, that's okay. Do so you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes. Thank you, please have a seat. The first thing I would like you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. First name, Jamie Sutton, J-A-I-M-I-E, last name Sutton, S-U-T-T-O-N. Thank you, go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Ms. Sutton, how old are you? I'm 23. Do you have an affiliate, or have you ever had an affiliation with the Extreme Dance Group here in Waukesha? Yes, I worked there last year. How long did you work for Extreme? From May of 2021 to April of 2022. What was your role with the organization? I was a coach for the junior team. What's the approximate age range of the junior team? About 8 to 11 years old. How many people were part of that group, the junior group? Ten. And did you participate with your dance team in the Waukesha Christmas Parade on November 21st of last year? Yes. You yourself were actually present for the parade? Yes. Did you attend as spectators or did you march in the parade? I marched in the parade. With your girls? Yes. Do you remember approaching the Five Points intersection? Yes. Do you remember what happened at that intersection? A car <coughs> drove along my left side. Yeah, asked to put up uh, for the jury exhibit number 15, which has previously been received and published. Go ahead. Okay, do you see the screen in front of you? Yes. You see a group of names in a green box, uh, at the bottom of which is titled Waukesha Extreme Dance? Yes. Are you familiar with the names in that list? You can take a, a few moments to read through it if you'd like. Yes. And uh, the black line connecting that box to a star, you see that? Yes. 
Does that star accurately represent the approximate location where you and your girls were when the car came through your group? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask that we display uh, Exhibit 32 and publish it. It's previously been received and admitted. Excuse me, published. This is a minute and 23. We're not going to play the whole thing, uh, Ms. Sutton. What I'd like to do is to play this from the beginning, uh, and then at a certain point, I'll pause it, and I'm going to ask you to see if you see yourself on the video, okay? Okay. So we're just going to take a, a look at this from the beginning. Please. We've paused at the 43 second mark. Do you see yourself on the screen? Yes. So that's a touch screen in front of you. Can you use your finger and circle yourself for us? Okay, so what, what's on your head? I have a gray hat on. Gotcha. Okay, we can clear that, please. Uh, we'll continue watching from that point. We've paused at the 57 second mark. Based on the video that we've seen so far in this exhibit, did it appear to you as though the girls were maintaining their um, position in the group? Yes. Okay. Can we display for the witness exhibit number 33 and publish this as well, please? It's previously been admitted and published. Go okay. ahead. I would like you, Ms. Sutton, to please take a few minutes or moments uh, and look at this exhibit, read all the names, let me know when you're done. Okay. The boxes with names in them, uh, are they accurately represented in this diagram based on where they were in the formation in real life? Yes. Okay. I now would like to play for the witness only, exhibit number 36, please. We played about 11 seconds for you there. Do you recognize that video? Yes. Have you seen it before? Yes. What does it show? It shows um, a car hitting some of our girls. Is that video an accurate depiction of how it, the events unfolded that day? Yes. I'd move exhibit 36 into evidence and ask for permission to publish. Exhibit 36 is received, permission to publish is granted. May I please have the total length of the video? This is 29 seconds. We're going to play from the beginning and we're going to turn the audio on. Your Honor, is the video playing at the right speed? That's my understanding. It will be. We'll double check for Mr. Brooks. Can we make sure that we've got it at 100%? Yep. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't. It had to be turned up. So that means when it was just showed, it wasn't playing at the right speed. I think I can just very simply clarify. To adjust the speed, you have to change it to see what it's set at. So it was at 100%, and it is now back at 100%. Thank you. <coughs> I object to that for the record. Clearly wasn't at the right speed. The record reflects the statement made by 
Attorney Wichow regarding the speed and the court accepts that. Go ahead. And Okay, I'd like to go back to the beginning of that, please. Um, we're going to pause, please. We're going to slow that down, Miss Sutton. And I'd like you, at a certain point, we're going to pause. And uh, if possible, if you can, I'd like you to identify some people in the frame for us, okay? Yes. All right, so we're going to play from the beginning at, can we reduce it, please, to 40% and turn the sound off? Okay, we'll play from the beginning. Pause. Pause to 12 seconds. Uh, how many people do you see laying on the ground, Ms. Sutton? I see one person laying on the ground in this frame. And could you circle them for us? Who is that? That is Vivian. What's her last name? Ural. I'd ask to preserve the annotation. Um, mark it as Exhibit 36A and enter it into the evidence, please. The annotation will be captured. It will be marked as 36A. It is received. Can we please remove the annotation? And can we go frame by frame for a few frames here? Pause. So we've stopped at a 12 second timestamp. At the moment that the SUV first made contact, with your group. Where were you in relation to the rest of the group? I was towards the back right side of the group. Right you know, as in house. standing in the road and, and looking down the parade route? Yes. Okay. Based on your position in the road and your memory from that day, are you able to identify uh, anybody else who's depicted in the video at this point? Um, I believe that's Olivia Stover in the left. And what color is her hair? Brown. Could you please circle Olivia for us? And I ask to preserve that annotation and mark it as Exhibit 36B and to enter it into evidence, please. Objection. Can you see face? Your objection is noted. 36B is received and the annotation will be captured and preserved for the record. Uh, we can take that down, right, please. <coughs> Ms. Sutton, can you walk us through your memory of what happened as the SUV began to go through your group? Yes, I was in the back right with some of our younger teams and was helping them get in their formation. And I heard some yelling behind me some screaming and I looked over my left shoulder and just as I looked over my left shoulder there was a red car that drove through by the time I looked it was already 
hitting our girls. What happened next? Um, girls that were not injured started to run over to the sidewalk. So I started to gather them all in one area. What happened next? Um, I tried to reunite those that I could with their parents. Those that I couldn't, I took with me and I heard there was an active shooter. So we went into Chef Pam's kitchen and hid out there until we were told it was all clear to go to our cars. Chef Pam's Kitchen is a, a business, a storefront on Main Street? Yes. Okay. What happened next? After that, I went to my car, went to the hospital, and did my police statements. In the immediate aftermath after the SUV came through your group, did you at any point see a person named Charlotte Urell? Not that day. Okay. You know who Charlotte Urell is? Yes. Can you explain for us um, her relationship to the extreme dance group? Overrule. Do we answer? She is the older sister of two of the Waukesha extreme dancers. Was she with your group in the parade? Yes, she was handing out candy. Okay. And. Uh, you said you didn't see Charlotte that day. When did you next see her? Well, I saw I saw her that day before the parade started, but I didn't see her in the aftermath. Okay. When did you see her Af after the SUV went through the group? When's the next time you saw Charlotte Urell? <coughs> Weeks later at the dance studio. Okay. And did you make any observations of Charlotte at that time? She was on crutches. Do you know why she was on crutches? <coughs> she was hit by the car that during drove the, through. During the parade? Yes. The red SUV we saw in the videos you watched? Yes. Okay. Uh, what about Grayson Murrell? Do you know who that is? Yes. Who's that? He is the younger brother of two of the Waukesha Extreme Dancers. Did you see Grayson Murrell marching with your group during the Christmas parade? Yes before the SUV came through the group? Yes. Did you see Grace and Urell at any point after the SUV came through? Not that day. When is the next time after the SUV came through your group that you saw Grayson? Um, weeks later when he was discharged from the hospital after being hit from the red SUV. Okay. And what personal observations did you make of Grayson at that time? Uh, he had a large cast on his arm. I believe he might have been in a wheelchair or crutches. Can you describe for us the uniform that your girls were wearing that day? They were wearing black leggings, black Waukesha Extreme jackets, white Santa hats with light up headbands attached to them, white light up gloves, and white pom poms. Could we please ex uh, display for the witness only? Exhibit number 102, 102. Ms. Sutton, okay. just, just let me know when you see the screen, okay? <coughs> okay. Uh, what are we looking at here? This is a red SUV that is smashed up. And there is a white light up headband on what used to be the side mirror. Do you recognize that white light up headband? Yes. What is it? Projection for your sake. Overruled. You may answer. That is one of the headbands that was over our girls' white Santa hats. So I need to get the rest of the film. Is this photo an accurate depiction of how that headband looked uh, the day of the parade? Yes. Before. Yep. Obviously, it's not on anybody's head right now. Yes. Okay. Um, I move exhibit 102 into evidence and ask for permission to publish. <laughs> the court's going to withhold receiving exhibit 102 until further foundation can be laid. So permission to publish is denied at this point. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Any questions for this witness? <sighs> yeah. 
Uh, do you recall what time you arrived at the parade that evening? The parade started at 4. I believe I was there around 3.30. Um, did you come with anybody or? I came with Alyssa. Would it be fair to say that you guys are pretty close? Yes. Um, do you recall giving a statement to Detective Schwartz? I gave a statement to a deputy. I don't know their name. Do you recall at what time that was roughly after the incident? It was around 6.30 that night. Do you remember where you were when you gave the statement? It was at the Transit Center, the Waukesha Transit Center. And when did you first notice a vehicle approaching? Uh, I heard screaming and yelling behind me, and that was when I looked over my left shoulder. Do you recall how close the vehicle was to you at the time where you looked over your left shoulder? It was on the left side, and I was on the far right, so it wasn't very close to me. Were you able to identify any driver of the vehicle? No. Um, would it be fair to say that you refer to it, the vehicle numerous times as car? Yes. Would it also be fair to say that you then identified it as an SUV? Yes. So what exactly did you see? What type of vehicle did you actually see, an SUV or a car? It was an SUV. Any reason why you would refer to it as car? I refer to all cars as just cars, no matter what they are. If it's a truck, it's still a car. Would it be fair to say that certain vehicles look different than others? Absolutely. At what point do you recall hearing uh, that, that there may have been an active shooter? Um, could you repeat that question? At what point do you recall hearing that there may be an active shooter? Uh, when I was gathering the girls who hadn't been hit, <laughs> a man came up to me and said that there was an active shooter do you amongst all of that. Do you recall if that was somebody marching in a parade or a spectator? or? I'm not sure. Were they any law enforcement? No. Did you hear any shots? No. And where did you go from there after you were informed that there may be an active shooter? I went into Chef Pam's kitchen. Did you go in there alone or? No, people were piling in there and I had several girls with me, several dancers with me. You were shown a few videos. Uh, do you recall seeing those before today? Yes. How many times have you seen them before today? At least 10 times. So pretty frequently you've, you've seen them? Yes. Would it be fair to say that you uh, 
saw those numerous times to maybe bring back something you couldn't recall? Yes. You stay for the record and for the jury who showed you the, these uh, videos multiple times? They were sent to me. So that would be, were they sent via email or? Over text message. Text message. Yeah. And can you stay for the record and for the jury who they, the text messages were sent from? Alyssa. So they weren't sent by any law enforcement or? No. Um, to the best of your knowledge, can you recall how Alyssa was able to obtain the uh, vid the videos that you saw today? I'm not sure. So she never mentioned that to you in any way, at any time? No. Were you able to identify the driver? No. Were you able to identify a license place number? No. Were you injured during the incident in any way? No. Did you uh, go to the hospital after the event? Yes. Were you transported there or did you drive there yourself or? Um, my fiance drove me there. Do you recall how long you stayed at the hospital? Not long. I was told just to go give a police statement. So it would be, it would be fair to say that you went to the hospital strictly for the police statement? I went to the hospital to see if the girls that I had unaccounted for were at the hospital. And were you able to gain the information that you were seeking? Yes. So that would explain the, uh, the brief stay at the hospital? Yes. Did you learn any additional information at that point? Nope. Do you recall in the statement that you gave to Detective Schwartz that you observed people running towards the sidewalk? Yes. Did you see anyone on the sidewalk struck by the vehicle? No. Do you recall stating that you were waiting inside of a building for what seemed like a long time? Yes. And what would you estimate time-wise, what time frame that would be? Probably. Can I just object here and ask for clarification about what building we're talking about? Sustain us to the form of the question, please rephrase. Well, from the report, it just says they needed to seek shelter inside of a building, so it doesn't it doesn't say uh, the name of the building in the report. I guess that's why I didn't refer to a sp specific name of the building. Just ask your question, Mr. Brooks. 
He's rephrased. How long were you, how long would you estimate you seeked shelter? Probably around an hour. And did you immediately leave from that point? Uh, I made sure all of my girls were reunited with their parents and family members. And once they were all reunited, then I left. Do you recall giving a written statement? Yes. Do you recall who you gave the uh, written statement to? No. Do you recall in your written statement saying that it seemed as if something was wrong with the vehicle? Yes. And what would you, from your recollection, what would you say was wrong with the vehicle? It was going very fast. I thought maybe there was brake failure happening because it was going so fast. And what made you come to that conclusion? Because there was a car driving through a parade instead of slowly rolling through like the other vehicles. So it would be fair to say your initial thought was something was wrong with the vehicle? Yes. Did you see any smoking from the vehicle, any damage to the vehicle at that point? No. Did you observe where the vehicle went after it passed you? No. Did you see anyone struck after the vehicle passed you? Yes. But to the best of your recollection, you don't recall what the vehicle did after it passed you? Correct. Would you say it was uh, pretty loud that that night? Yes. A pretty windy, cold. Yes. After you had been waiting in the, uh, the building for a while, who came and informed you guys that it was okay to leave at that point? Uh, it was police that came and told us we were clear to go. Was it one officer, a couple Just of one. Them, two of them? Just one. You don't recall their names by chance? No. At that point, did you ask the police officers for any information about the active shooter? No. About what time would you estimate that you left the parade? After I got the all clear. You, do you recall what time that was? I do not recall.
recall if the vehicle had any tinted windows? I do not recall. Were you close enough to the vehicle to make to make out the make and model of the vehicle? No. Do you recall any windows being down or anything like that? No. Do you recall anything being tossed from the vehicle, uh, falling out of the vehicle? No. So it just pretty much just moving straight. Yes. About how long would you approximate you watch the travel of the vehicle after it had passed you? I didn't watch the vehicle after it went past me. I was looking at the dancers on the ground. So it would be fair to say that once the vehicle passed you, You couldn't see if it struck anyone else at that point. Correct. <laughs> no further questions. Can you read your record? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. You may step down. Thank you. She may. Please call your next witness. State calls Detective Mike Carpenter. Good afternoon, Detective. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Michael Carpenter, first name spelled M-I-C-H-A-E-L, last name spelled C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R. -E Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Detective, what do you do for a living? I'm a detective with the City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you been a detective? I've been a detective for approximately 12 years. How long total in service with the Waukesha Police Department? Uh, approximately 20 years. And is that your first job, Waukesha Police Department? I worked a brief stint for about six months each at the Town of Brookfield Police Department part-time and the Town of Merton Lake Patrol part-time before moving on to the City of Waukesha. What is your current assignment as a detective? I'm in the Computer Forensics Unit. What type of things do you do in that unit? Analyze digital data, uh, digital video recorders, uh, cell phones, um, regular computers, pretty much anything that can hold digital media. Okay. Did you conduct a speed analysis in this case? Yes, I did. Can you walk us through, uh, when you set out to conduct a speed analysis, first of all, what is it, and how do you go about conducting that analysis? Basically, throughout a reviewing video for this incident, we wanted to determine if there was a way to get an accurate speed um, from the red SUV. Um, I've been through some training, 
certified as an input ACE examiner. That's a software we use. And we determined that there were cameras that existed along the parade route on West Main Street that may have held useful information. Specifically, we were looking for uh, surveillance video that was still in its native proprietary format uh, that would still hold that metadata that would let us conduct a speed analysis. I did locate uh, Bosco Social Club, which is a bar located at 260 West Main Street in the city of Waukesha that had a proprietary format that I believe that let us do that analysis. How many cameras were affixed to the Bosco's storefront? There were two, one on the southwest side of the building and one on the southeast, at least that we used. I believe they also have um, video inside and towards the rear of the establishment, but we were concerned with the cameras facing West Main Street. So once you get the surveillance video, what do you do with it? I viewed the video to determine if it would be suitable. Uh, the video was, in my opinion, pretty high quality. I could see the vehicle clearly traveling westbound on uh, West Main Street, so we believe that we'd be able to explore that further and try to conduct the analysis from that. So what did you do? Uh, the next step was we had to determine what an accurate frame rate was for the camera. Uh, most surveillance systems have what's called a variable frame rate. Um, in defining a frame, basically a video is a series of still images or frames put together to show motion. Um, however, that can vary from frame to frame. That timing may not be exactly the same. Uh, we went down to Bosco's and placed a device in front of each camera called a VFR light board that's uh, supplied and calibrated by the company Input Ace. We placed it in front of each camera, and that board's got a series of flashing lights that have timing in them. Uh, recorded a video of that board from each camera and then returned to my forensic lab and place that into the input ACE software and we were able to calculate the timing um, more accurately between each frame so we had a, had a more scientific approach to it. And what did you do with that information? Once I had that information, um, let me back up, prior to having that information I had also asked uh, Specialist Plata of our Criminal Evidence Forensics Unit, our traditional forensics, to respond to the area of Bosco's and use the department's it's called FARO, F-A-R-O, their 3D laser crime scene um, mapping device. They mapped various points in front of Bosco's, and we were able to basically find the orienta orientation and the position that the eastbound camera was facing. And then once that was done, we could take a screenshot of that 3D scan, which measures, my understanding is millions of points once I had that done, I was able to bring that into Input Ace software to begin the overlay process where I could overlay the images on top of each other. So we brought the screenshot of the 3D scan in, brought a partial video in of the red SUV traveling westbound, and began to compare points from the 3D scan and the video and began to plot those points. For instance, a um, intersect, intersecting crack in the sidewalk. If I could see it in the 3D scan, I would plot that point and then match it up in the video. <coughs> Did that over a number of points, and then that enables us to lay the video identically on top of the 3D scan. Um, once that was complete, then that's where we started bringing in the lightboard video to find out the timing, uh, to find out how many milliseconds or seconds uh, passed in this in incident. In this particular video, I was concerned with frames 35 through 60 um, of that vehicle traveling westbound. Once I obtained the timing from the VFR light board, I determined that with the assistance of the software that the average was um, 0.834 seconds had passed in those 25 frames that that vehicle, or I'm sorry, 26 frames that that vehicle continued westbound. What that does, it then gives me a low end and a high end that it can use for a margin of error. So it said the longest time it would take for the vehicle to travel westbound through those 26 frames would be 0.838 seconds, and the quickest time that it could pass through those 26 frames would be 0 0.830 seconds. Once I had that information, I was able to completely overlay 
the video onto the 3D scan and I could start at frame 35 and it enables me to overlay it within the 3D scanning software and I was able to drop a small point. Uh, the clearest point of reference in, in this view is there were people around it and other things in the area. I was able to pick the front passenger's wheel and drop a point directly in the center of that wheel, advance frame by frame until I was at frame 60, drop another point, and then I can use a slider to go back and forth to either have the vehicle present or just the 3D scanning. Uh, once I had just the 3D scanning, then I could take and measure the distance from that first point in frame 35 to the last point in frame 60, and then I, I was able to calculate that I was able to uh, input that in with the uh, different measurements of you know, 0.838 seconds and the 0 0.830. When I did that within the software, it told me that the distance was 12.7477 meters. When I converted that to feet, I believe it was 80, I'm sorry, 41.8231 feet. That allowed me to compare that with the um, fastest that the vehicle could travel and the slowest that the vehicle could travel. And with the margin of error, convert that to feet per second and then miles per hour, which came up with a measurement for those 26 frames of 33.7 to 34.6 miles per hour in those particular frames. Okay. Can we project for uh, the witness and for the jury exhibit number 15, which has previously been received and published? Go ahead. Yes, it's the Five Points uh, intersection area of downtown Waukesha. The screen in front of you is a touch screen. Could you just uh, draw a small little X uh, to depict where the approximate location of Bosco's is? I believe it's going to be roughly right about here. So north side of Main Street? Yes. Okay. Um, and. I don't think we need to save that. We'll just say it's it's an X uh, between the Five Points intersection and Gasper Street on Main. So we'll clear that uh, and take that down. And now can we please project for the witness and for the jury exhibit number 31, which I think that's also been received and published. And it has, yep. <laughs> Okay, you see the screen in front of you? Yes, I do. Is this the video from Bosco's that you have been talking about today? Yes. Okay, can we, let's start at about the 10 second timestamp. Now you were talking about 26 frames, I think you said? Yes. Okay. Um, Let's slow this down to about 50%, please. And we'll play from this point. Nine seconds? Sorry, yes, nine seconds. Pause. We have paused at 16 seconds. So you're basically measuring what? Walk us through the, the screen here. What are, you, what are you measuring? So as soon as the red SUV came into uh, view of the video traveling westbound, once I had a frame where there was no obstruction and I could see the full passenger side tire, that's where I dropped my first point. And then I let the video, or I'm sorry, I let the uh, SUV continue westbound until I found another spot where there was no obstruction now. When I overlaid it between the 3D software and the video I have here, um, during this video there's no foliage on the branches. During the 3D scan there is foliage, so that blocked a little bit, so I had to stop a little earlier than what I wanted. But I was just basically measuring how far that SUV or that wheel traveled during those frames in that amount of time. Okay, so you're, you're measuring distance and time. 
Yes. And from that, you're calculating speed. Yes. And you've already talked about the, the different variables that you took into consideration, right? Yes. And that resulted in, what's your ultimate conclusion? 33.7 to 34.6 miles per hour. And the 26 frames that you're talking about, they are in this video? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's just play from the 16 second mark. Pause. And we stopped at the 17 second mark. So the 26 frames are entirely within that 9 second to 17 seconds. Yes. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Cross. Uh, very, very briefly. Um, you stated earlier that um, in reference to traveling through frames that sometimes you may encounter problems with the estimation. Would that be fair to say? Uh, no, I don't believe that was my testimony. You testified to um, at one point or another that sometimes timing, exact timing of speed could be a little inaccurate. No, I don't, I don't believe that properly characterizes. What were you referring to at that? I was referring to that uh, digital video recording systems, surveillance systems, they use something that's called variable frame rate. I can't say that every single one does, but almost all of them do, that from frame to frame it could change by a millisecond, hundreds of milliseconds. To do this the most accurate scientific way possible, that's why we conducted it the way we did with the variable frame rate board. So there can be sometimes miscalculations. Is that fair to say? I don't believe so in the way we performed it, no. Well, I was referring to the process in general, which you just stated that sometimes it, by milliseconds, hundreds of milliseconds, a millisecond, that sometimes there can be miscalculations. I'm not sure I'm completely understanding the question. Are you asking in this uh, specific example or just in general? The, the process in general. Somebody conducting an analysis a completely different way, it's possible, but in uh, this analysis from my training experience is the most scientifically uh, possible way we can do it. And before this occasion, had you used the same method that you used for this occasion? Yes. How many times? I had not used it in a live case yet. This was our first chance to do this, but I had uh, done it a number of times in our training examples. But the first time you've done it in a live case? Yes. Can you state for the jury what is the difference between a live case and any other case? Uh, there, there really is no difference. The uh, training examples are hands-on, and the process we follow uh, through all those examples to establish competency is exactly the same way we do it for any other investigation. So if they're pretty much the same, why is it a need for the title live if they're pretty much the same? It was just a term I used to say this was the uh, first investigation we've used it in. So were the other cases just pretty standard cases then, not live investigations? They were training examples that came from actual investigations that those agencies gave permission for their case files and their data to be shared as a training example and to recreate their um, examinations. So they weren't active investigations to the best of your knowledge? Correct. They were adjudicated. So this time that you used this, this technology was the first time to your knowledge that it was during a live investigation? Yes. So would it be fair to say that that's like the first time it's being used? In the city of Waukesha or in general? I'm not sure I'm understanding. Is it fair to say that this specific investigation was the first time that you've used it? That, that I personally used the software or yes. that somebody has used it? You. This was the first time I personally used the software as our agency recently purchased it and this was the first case we were able to use it on. And so 
would it be fair to say that usually anyone's first time using new technology, there would be a learning curve? Would that be fair to say? Uh, I would. I would say no. So you would say you came right into using this new technology the first time you've ever personally used it and knew exactly how to work it? I would say over my career, uh, especially with uh, conducting di digital forensic examinations, uh, I had over 1,500 hours of training in various aspects. I'm a certified trainer. I hold a um, certified forensic computer examiner certification through the International Association of Computer Investigative Specialists, along with other uh, certifications as well. I obtained multiple certifications from InputAce, the company that put on the training uh, for this process, for this device, for video analysis, and we tend to follow principles uh, throughout all the different disciplines, and the training's quite intensive, quite difficult, so over that time, uh, you develop the skills necessary to uh, be able to start using software, using your techniques to do these investigations right away. Um, so you're stating some pretty uh, nice credentials there, but you, you also just said that there's some difficulty in the training. Would any of that difficulty lean towards the learning curve of working the software? In my opinion, for myself, no. So you you pretty much can come into new technology and just know exactly how to work it. You're just ready to go. Objection, argumentative, and answered. Grounds. Um, overruled, he may answer it. Uh, this particular, if we're talking strictly about video analysis, I attended a 40-hour class using the software input ACE along with uh, forensic video analysis at the National Computer Forensic Institute uh, run by the Secret Service in Alabama. And then I also uh, obtained uh, several certifications through input ACE themselves. So having approximately 80 hours in training uh, through the video software, um, this was not much of a learning curve as I had previously been using input a software for approximately two years. So this new technology was a variation of, well, let, let me back up a bit. What you're saying is this new technology was a variation of technology that you had already previously been using. Objection. This characterizes the evidence. Grounds. This is not new technology. Grounds. Uh, sustain this to the form of the question. You may ask. Before using it, this technology in this live investigation, as you coined it, have you previously heard of this technology before using it in this live investigation? Yes. Any idea how long it may have been being used before you used it? Um, to my best knowledge, it's been around for uh, several years. We first started investigating it in approximately January. January of 2022? Yes. You are aware that this live investigation would have been a live investigation in November of 2021. Would that be fair to say? Yes. So it will also be fair to say that if your department didn't start using this technology until January of 2022, how were you able to use it in November of 2021? Uh, this was not conducted in November of 2021. Uh, once we learned about um, methods when we were trying to locate a more scientific way to do a speed analysis, I uh, discovered this method, the training that the company put on. Uh, we had to obtain budgetary funds. It was approximately $4,000. Uh, then we had to schedule the training. The training was supposed to be earlier in the spring, and um, a couple of the instructors came down with COVID, so the classes got pushed back to summer. Um, we had been doing, they had provided me with all the online training videos so that I could go through, watch those, um, start prepping myself as much as I could. And then the summer, we actually had the uh, class with the hands-on examples 
and that's when they provided the certification. And after that is when we uh, actually went out and were able to do the speed analysis based on the videos that we had from November 21st. So the bulk of your uh, learning to work this technology was done via video? Video and uh, live instruction. And that live instruction was in the summer, as you stated, correct? Some of it was, they don't do it all in one segment, so it was completed um, with an instructor between, I believe, May and the beginning of August. So when did you, uh, around what time did you do this analysis? I believe I performed the actual analysis uh, somewhere around the middle of August. I can't remember the exact date. So pretty recent? Yes. Any idea why so long, considering that uh, this matter has been going on for roughly a year? Objection. Asked and answered. Grounds. For the last three to five minutes. Grounds. <coughs> Overruled. He may answer. We just wanted to make sure that we had all the uh, proper equipment, the proper training, all the proper proper documentation, uh, certifications for myself and the device before we went out and did the actual analysis. So your department thought it would be best to hold off on the analysis until you got everything in order? Yes, until we had the certifications to make sure they were valid. Would it be fair to say that that's a pretty lengthy amount of time to wait to do a, an analysis in a case that's a pretty big case? No, I would not say that. Have you ever had that sort of delay before in any other live investigations? I can't recall specifically if there's been something that uh, delayed our analysis of another piece of evidence, another investigation, but there is a delay to sometimes purchasing equipment for a new piece of technology or a new type of training. Uh, when we start talking about digital forensics, uh, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars for equipment and often anywhere between three to six thousand dollars for a uh, week long of training for something particular. So there's a, a delay because of the financial part of the investigations or I'm not sure I'm getting with some sometimes there can be any idea how that might apply to this live investigation I, I'm not sure I understand the question how the the financial part of the equipment and as you said sometimes things can get expensive would that apply to this live investigation of why the delay was so long objection grounds elements grounds overall to my answer yes I believe in January again is when we first started looking at this we had to obtain the funding schedule the training um, wait for the company to host the training and all of those things before um, we were ready to proceed with it do you recall who you were referred to to do the analysis as far as as far as basically who tapped you to do it. I'm, I'm quite sure you're not the only person that does what you does out of your department. Would that be fair to say? No, that, that would not be fair. I am uh, currently right now the only one certified in forensic video analysis. So who tapped you to be the video analysis for this particular case? I was the only one at our agency that would be able to perform that at this time. Who contacted your agency? De Detective Casey. And who does Detective Casey work for uh, from your knowledge? Uh, City of Waukesha Police Department. To the best of your knowledge, uh, was Detective Casey made aware that it would be a long delay before the analysis can get completed? Yes, we had discussions about it. 
was Detective Casey informed that it would be such a lengthy delay? Uh, grounds. Overruled. He may answer. Not initially. Uh, again, this was supposed to be done a lot earlier in the year. However, due to um, the limited number of classes they have scheduled, where they're scheduled, and the fact that uh, COVID unfortunately canceled a couple of the classes, uh, that did increase the delay, and which I did have conversations with Detective Casey about, um, advising him that it would be a little bit longer. Were there uh, any, I guess I would say, suggestions that maybe you could use a different technology that wouldn't have caused such a long delay? Uh, not for video analysis, no. So what video analysis were you doing before this new technology that you just started using? This was, this technology was specific to speed analysis. So there was no technology specific to speed analysis before this new technology? Not that I'm trained to know. So would there have been someone else tapped to do the analysis if it wasn't for this new method? I was concerned with video analysis, and I'm the only one at our agency that can conduct video analysis at this time as far as um, other methods outside of digital forensics or forensic video analysis. I wouldn't have any uh, expertise or knowledge to speak on those. I'm, I'm a little confused because do you do video and speed analysis or one of the other? Because you just stated, and it, I think it would be fair to ask, did you, did you just not state that this was pertaining to speed analysis? Yes, I do video analysis for all types of cases, whatever is requested. Um, I am trained to measure speed from strictly video analysis. I am not uh, trained to estimate uh, speed through other means of investigation. So how were you able to come up with an analysis of the speed in this investigation? based on the technique that I described earlier in my testimony of um, using the 3D scanning software, overlaying the uh, video of the suspect vehicle traveling westbound on Main Street, plotting the points, and then measuring the distance over the time. Was there any other method? Well, let me back up. Was there any other technology that you could have utilized that same method without a delay? Sustained. You stated that you've done speed analysis numerous times. Would that be fair to say? In what regards? In, in and what to, example? To any cases before this one. In training examples, not in um, an investigation done by our agency. So it would be fair to say you yourself haven't done very many speed analysis. I couldn't give you a firm number of how many we did in, in training over that time. Um, no, I'll, not not we, you. I'm asking specific to you yourself. Outside of this current investigation, I have not currently performed any for any other agency yet, no. So would it be fair to say that maybe you could have been off on a few year analysis, being that it was your first time doing it in a live investigation, as you coined it? No, I would, I would not say that. Grounds. Hold on. What's the objection? Calls for speculation and argumentative. Grounds. Better grounds than that. Um, Mr. Brooks, what was your question again? Uh, my question was that would it be fair to say that since he stated that this was his first time doing a speed analysis in a live investigation and he hadn't done pretty much haven't done it before would it be fair to say that 
maybe he could have been off a little bit on his mis uh, on his calculations, being that it was his first time. Um, overall, team answer. I I would say no to that. Um, with this, again, we're following the premise of uh, digital forensics. We it's a scientific process. We learn a technique. Um, we follow the process. We follow the standards. It's designed to be verifiable and repeatable, repeatable by anybody else that would have that training and um, that software performant. The files can be turned over to another person with equal training, and they should be able to walk step by step and still come to the same conclusion. So, I, I would say I'm confident in the speed that was obtained. So, if someone else can come to the same conclusions that you came to, is it fair to say that someone else more, a little more experienced could have been tapped to do the speed analysis instead of yourself? We didn't have anybody more experienced in, in this area or our agency for this particular method. Is it possible that a, a different agency could have been tapped to do the speed analysis? I, this is outside of the witness's grounds. personal knowledge. Grounds. Um, sustained as to the form of the question. Besides yourself, do you know of anybody that can do this analysis and come to the same conclusions as yourself? I know of the company that provided the training. Other than that, I do not know anybody personally in this area um, or other investigators to use this specific technique. Uh, would it be fair to say that you weren't the only one being trained through video and uh, the like? Sorry, I don't understand the question. Um, you, you stated that you had to be trained in this form of doing the analysis. You stated the classes were, I think, from somewhere from May to August, you, you stated. Would that be fair to say? Yes. What I'm asking is, were you the only person that was taking those classes? Uh, there were people from other countries, other states, um, wide ranges of... Uh, specialties, uh, paralegals, accident reconstructionists, um, forensic investigators, things of that nature. Anybody in Wisconsin that you know of? Not that I know of, no. From any other departments that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. So it would be fair to say that you, you're not sure? I don't know uh, who has exactly what piece of software in each location, but I have not heard of anybody else in this area having uh, the, the ability to do the speed analysis through video. So it would be fair to say you're not sure? As to, could, could you clarify one more time, please? I was, I was, pretty, I was pretty direct. Mr. Brooks asked as, as far He doesn't understand your question, that's why he's asking. Did you know of anyone else that was taking the same training to operate the same equipment and technology that you were? Personally, no, if that's what you're asking. So it would be fair to say that you're not sure. I can say with confidence that nobody in the classes that I was um, enrolled in were from the state of Wisconsin. There were people from other countries, other states. That's um, really all I would know about that. I don't. And how did you come to that conclusion? <laughs> There, typically during our classes, we go through an introduction where we work, uh, where we're from, where we work, who we work for. So it was kind of like, uh, because you did state that they were kind of like video, so I'm assuming that would be online. Would that be fair to say? It was live online training, yes. So it would pretty much be like a, a, a classroom from an online setting. Objection. As an answer, then I would, uh, well, relevance. Grounds. It's been asked and answered, so sustain. Next question. About how long did it take when you started to do the analysis? How long did it take from the point that you started into completion? To put everything together, um, and it wasn't worked on all at the same time because we had to do the camera overlay. We had to go get the uh, readings from the uh, a variable frame light board and then start putting all that together. I would say hours wise. I would say probably someplace between 20 and 24 hours to put it all together. So about a, roughly a day. 
well, work days probably probably about probably three days or so. And would it be any reason why you, if you knew that you were being certified uh, for that analysis, would it be any reason why you wouldn't start getting things in place beforehand and to be ready to go as soon as you needed to be ready to go? I had the the video, the surveillance videos that we were using from Bosco Social Club in place. I asked uh, Specialist Platt and Specialist Smith Schmidt to assist with the 3D scanning prior to having the last certification in place so that everything was there and ready to go once I had that certification. So it would be fair to say that you had help in getting everything ready? With the 3D scan. Were you at any time trained in the 3D scanning? I am not currently trained in the operation of the Pharaoh. That's why I requested um, Specialist Platt and Specialist Schmidt to perform that scan. Do you know if uh, those two specialists, I missed the name, so I don't want to butcher them, so I'm just not going to say them, but it would be fair to say it was two. Would that yes. Be fair? Were any of those two trained in the same speed analysis training as yourself? No, they are trained in forensic crime scene mapping using the 3D scanner, not uh, digital forensics or video analysis. Would it be fair to say that even though they they are not trained in the same area as yourself, that they were an essential key part to putting everything together? The 3D scanning software is an essential function to be able to perform uh, this particular analysis, yes. So it, it would have been, it, it, it's fair to say it would have been a, a task if you would have had to do it by yourself. I, I wouldn't be able to perform the analysis without the uh, 3D scanning. Did that in any way cause any delay? No. Do you recall about what date you started the analysis? I Rouse. Well, Overruled, he may answer. I believe the 3D scanning took place on um, the early morning hours of, I want to say, August 10th. Um, when I had Specialist Platt and Schmidt to perform the 3D scan, they went back downtown uh, early in the morning to try and do it when there were as little vehicles as possible uh, on the roadway so that it wouldn't interfere uh, with the actual um, diagram scan. I want to say the last certification was obtained somewhere right around August 16th, and then it was putting everything together afterwards. I'm sorry, did you state the last certification was obtained around August 16th? The, the last training class, yes. So at the time that you started, you weren't yet certified? I had not started anything as far as the speed analysis prior to that. Why would you be starting the prep for the analysis if you were not yet certified? Objection. Grounds. Sustain this to the form of the question. You just stated that um, the preparations to do the analysis started around August 10th. Is that correct? The preparations by Specialist Plata and Specialist Schmidt as to the crime scene mapping uh, was done on August 10th. So when did you come into the fold to start doing your part of the uh, analysis? Uh, my part of the analysis originally began with just simply reviewing the video, um, uh, learning what video would be best, what frames I, I would want to use, which I obtained my training from the National Computer Forensic Institute in video analysis in April of 2021. and. Um, went back through the same training through input ace and was already certified through them so i was already certified uh, for the video analysis portion of itself the only thing i was waiting on was the um, materials necessary for the actual speed calculations and when did you receive those uh materials to to do that part the certification was obtained on i believe right around august 16th 
I can't remember if it was that so, day exactly, but. But it is fair to say that you had already started work before the date of August 16th. Objection, asked and answered. Sustained. So when did you actually start to do the analysis? What, what date was that? Sustained Grounds. Sustained. Do you know about the date that you completed your analysis? I believe it was somewhere around somewhere around August 23rd, 22nd, 23rd. So it'd be fair to say roughly about a week or so. Roughly, yes. And do you recall when you um, actually turned in the analysis information? I, I believe it was around August 23rd, right around there. Uh, do you recall who you turned the analysis information into? I turned it into my supervisor, who then electronically forwarded it to the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office. Any idea how long it took for it to be viewed? No, I, I do not know. At the point that you started your part of the analysis, did you still need the help of the, the other two people from your department? No. So once you started, it was just yourself? Yes. And you, you were confident that you were fully trained, you wouldn't have any hiccups working this technology for the first time? Correct. You were pretty sure that you, you would get everything on point? Yes. No further questions. Thank you, redirect. Thank you. The video in question from Bosco's Social Club was recorded during the Christmas parade on November 21st of 2021. Is that correct? Yes. You went to Bosco's in August to obtain that video, correct? Or I should say you obtained that video and then in August conducted your speed analysis with it, right? Yes, that's correct. August of 2022. That's fair. August 2022. I stand corrected. Uh, correct? Yes. Okay. If you were to clean slate, take that video file, start your calculations here today, would you come to the same conclusion in terms of miles per hour over those 26 frames? Yes. Objection hearsay. Overruled his answer my stand. The software that we're talking about is called Input Ace. Uh, correct. It started off Input Ace in, I believe, it was the earlier part of this year, Axon. Um, they also make uh, tasers, body cameras, things like that. They purchased the company now. It's called, uh, the software is called Axon Investigate. Uh, at the start of this, it was called Input Ace. You're certified to conduct speed analysis using that software? Yes. This case is not the first time that you use that software, is that correct? Correct. Uh, Overruled. You asked him questions about that, so he'll, he gets to redirect. You may answer. Correct. You, you use the software to conduct speed analysis on prior occasions, right? Yes. As part of your training? Yes. Your training involves using the Faro 3D scanning tool, correct? Well... Mm no, and, and that was not state, state. As I provided the oh, answer, sorry. so rephrase your question, please. Sure. <laughs> During your training to use the Input Ace software, did you follow the same procedure in terms of using the Faro 3D scanning? Objection. It's hearsay. Overruled. Not hearsay. Go ahead. The procedures were the same, however, during training examples, uh, Throughout the country, there's there's different 3D crime scene scanners out there. Uh, Trimble, Leica, Faro, Total. They use various different ones during the training examples of what what they had set up. The software worked similar. The methods were the same, regardless of which 3D scanner you use. Okay. And as a result of that training and the multiple times that you used the software to conduct speed analysis, you obtained a certification, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, are you the first person? to testify about speed analysis using the input ACE software in any court in this country? No. Objection. 
overruled his answer may stand. So when reference was made during cross-examination about this being new, air quotes, software, or new technology, is that an accurate uh, description of the technology? No, objection. I was referring it to it being new to him, strictly to himself. objections noted, his answer may stand. Next question, please. Is this, off, uh, this technology, the software program, Input ACE, uh, used exclusively by law enforcement? No, it is not. Who else uses it? Um, accident reconstructionists, insurance companies, uh, defense attorneys, law enforcement. Um, it's, it's available to anybody that, uh, that provides payment, goes through the training, uh, things of that nature. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You may step down. Thank you. All right, this will be a good opportunity for an afternoon break. I'm going to keep it a little bit shorter, hopefully about 10 minutes uh, for the jury and the parties. I'll rise. Before we take our break, I just want to discuss a little bit of timing since it's a little after 3.30 um, and how long the state believes the next witness will take. The next witness is Deborah Ramirez. She is going to take about 10 minutes on direct. I'd like to wrap up today uh, very close to 4.30. Um, and so if we can keep that in mind. And then I also need to address one other thing, and that is the clerk's office has made arrangements for a uh, Spanish interpreter for tomorrow from 12 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. And so I need to know from the state whether they will be utilizing the interpreter. Well, your Honor, we can call witnesses out of order. It, it's, we're behind. I'll be very honest. Today has gone much slower than we anticipated on cross-examination. So, um, but I understand the arrangements have been made so we can shift things a little bit and, uh, and try and accommodate that schedule by the interpreter. Do you believe you can also have the witness that Mr. Brooks identified needing an interpreter. Oh, uh, let me check on that during the break, Your Honor. Thank you. I would appreciate that because then I would like to utilize the interpreter. The only other request, since we were only able to secure one interpreter, would be to put um, to have a different witness in between the two, uh, so that the interpreter has an appropriate break. Okay, understood. Um, and then, of course, it will also require us to be mindful of when we take. Um, the lunch hour since the interpreter is available from 12 until 3.30. So okay. 12 to 3:30. we may need to take our lunch maybe at 11.30 um, and I'm okay if we start a little bit later than the noon but that should give us enough time. Any questions about that Mr. Brooks? Uh. Again, you know, I'm going to say I don't consent to that name, but no, no questions. All right. Thank you. All right. We are in recess. Ten minutes. Come back.
On the record. All right, we are officially back on the record. Then appearances are as they were before. We'll br bring the jury out, and then the state may call its next witness. So go ahead. The jurisdiction, Your Honor. Be a perfect denied. time. The what? request to address it is denied. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? It's denied. Is that a I'm not going to address it right now. I've addressed it previously. There's no new information. Denied. Is it a judicial determination you're making, Your Honor? The record speaks for itself. Can it be filed in a motion? I don't understand the question. Can I file the <coughs> motion that I've been raising? I'm not going to answer that, sir. I'm not going to direct you to file something or not file something. The jury's coming out. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? All right. Let's attack it agreement. Let's attack it agreement. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Statement call its next witness. Thank you. The state calls Deborah Ramirez. Good afternoon, Ms. Ramirez. If you would please make your way to my witness stand, which is to my right upper riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. And then my clerk, Teresa, who's all the way across from you, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Please be seated. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Um, Deborah Ramirez, um, D-E-B-O-R-A, last name R-A-M-I-R-E-Z. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Ms. Ramirez, uh, where do you live? What city? Waukesha. Okay. Are you familiar with the annual Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yes, we go every year. Okay, so were you there last year, November 21st of 2021? I was. Who were you there with? Um, my boyfriend, our four kids, and my dad. Okay. Uh, is one of those, was one of those kids a 12-year-old? Yes. What is that child's name? Isaac. And what's his last name? Foglia Ramirez. Uh, do you remember where you and your family were seated during the parade? Um, I can't remember the exact street name. We were um, across the street from Chef Pam's Kitchen. Do you know if you were on Main Street? Yes. Do you remember what intersection you were near? I can't remember. Okay. Uh, may we please display for the jury and the witness exhibit number 15, which is previously <coughs> published. Let me zoom in a little bit on the five points intersection. Okay, do you see the screen in front of you, Ms. Ramirez? I do. Do you see uh, a green box with your name and Isaac's name in it? Yes. Do you see a black line connecting that box to an orange star? Yes. Are you familiar with the area that this map represents? Yes. Okay. In terms of the Sunday afternoon of the Christmas parade last year, is that orange star an accurate representation of the approximate area where you and your family were watching the Christmas parade? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, 
Do you remember anything significant or out of the ordinary happening while you were watching the parade? Um, at um, one point during the parade while we were watching, um, I remember my, um, my boyfriend suddenly screaming, whoa, 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 whoa. And then when he screams, um, I looked to my right and that's when I saw a um, red vehicle coming right towards us. You previously said that you were across the street from Chef Pam's? Yes. So you would have been on the south side of the street? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember what the vehicle that was speeding <coughs> towards you looked like? Speeding. Um, sustain as to the form of the question, please rephrase. Okay. My mistake, I thought that that's what she said. And Ms. Ramirez, do you remember what the vehicle looked like as it approached you and your family? It was a red <coughs> SUV. That's all I remember. What happened as it got closer? Um, I, um, I froze as it was coming closer. Um, by the time that I finally um, tried to move, it was already like right at us and um, I was hit on my left um, left foot, left leg. What area of your left foot and left leg? Rejection. Over It was um, on top of my left foot. It, um, the tire went over my foot. Where were you in position, uh, where were you positioned in relation to Isaac? I was standing to the right of Isaac. Okay. Did you notice whether or not Isaac was hit? I did not until, um, I didn't know he was hit until after, um, until after it happened that he said, Mom, my leg hurts. Isaac was standing next to you, you said? Yes. And the car ran over, the vehicle ran over your left foot? Yes. When you say next to you, do you mean Isaac was immediately to your side or in front of you or behind you or some other description? He was to my left standing um, just probably about a few inches ahead of me. What happened after the vehicle ran over your foot? I fell to the ground and um, I was kind of disoriented at first. All I remember was hearing the vehicle um, speeding past speeding past us um, towards other people. And looking all around me, I just remember seeing um, a lot of people on the ground as I was looking around to see if my kids were okay. While you were on the ground, could you hear the sound of the vehicle's engine? I, um, the objections noted, it's overruled, you may answer. I remember, um, I remember hearing the, um, the vehicle as it was, um, I don't remember hearing the, the vehicle um, hitting the brakes. I remember listening, like hearing like accelerate instead of, instead of stopping. Did you uh, seek medical treatment after the parade? I seeked a medical treatment the next day. Where did you go? I went to urgent care in Pewaukee. What injuries did you sustain as a result of the vehicle striking your foot? I had a um, hematoma on my left uh, big toe, and um, I had my um, my ankle was sprained. The um, I went to th see an orthopedic doctor, who said that um, there was tissue damage. Did you bring your son Isaac to seek medical treatment at any point after the parade? I did, also the next day with me. Same location? Yes. 
What injuries did Isaac sustain as a result of this incident? Sprain on his left leg. I would like to project for the witness only. Actually, 36 was that intended. Actually, for uh, the jury as well, exhibit 36, which has previously been published. Go ahead. And can we play this without any sound <coughs> at about 30%, please, from the beginning? there at nine seconds. Mr. Ramirez, did you see either yourself or your son Isaac in that portion of the video? video? Slightly, yes. On uh, which side? Um, on the left. Uh, and do you, Can you describe what you were wearing? I was wearing a pink jacket. Can you describe what Isaac was wearing? He was wearing a uh, green jacket. We show for the video, excuse me, for the witness only uh, exhibit 43. <coughs> Go ahead. Mr. Ramirez, can you let me know when you see something on the screen in front of you? I can see it. You can, okay. Um, do you recognize this screenshot? Yes, I do. What does it show us? I can, um, I can see just a little bit of myself, but I can see um, Isaac on there. Does this depict you and Isaac before, during, or after you were struck? Before. Is this an accurate depiction of how you looked that day? Yes. Isaac as well? Yes. Move exhibit 43 into evidence <coughs> and ask to publish. Objection, where, where, are, where are they in the video? Um, your objection is noted. The exhibit number 43 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Can we zoom in on the middle left of that photo, please? Okay, just so we know what we're looking at, the screen in front of you is a touch screen. Can you use your finger and circle Isaac for us? Yes. And that's the green jacket you described? Yes. Okay, and on the which side of the screen? On the middle left. Okay. Can you circle yourself now, if you see it? And that's the pink jacket you described? Yeah. Right next to Isaac? Yes. All right, we can clear that, please. Can we show the witness only, please? Uh, exhibit number 45. Go ahead. Do you see the picture? The, I do. Okay. And uh, what does this depict? It looks like a picture of after getting struck by the vehicle. Do you see either yourself or Isaac in this photo? I see both. And is this an accurate picture of how you looked after the vehicle struck you? Yes. Move exhibit 45 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Can't really see. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Exhibit 45 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Can you please zoom in on the middle left? Can you use that touch screen again, Mr. Ramirez, and circle uh, where you are? And now can you please circle Isaac? Same pink and green jackets we've been talking about? Yes. Left side of the screen? Yes. Okay, we can clear that, please. Can we please show the witness only, exhibit number 40? You see the, fit the photograph in front of you? Yes. Are you in that photograph? I am. What does this show? <coughs> that shows me getting up 
afterwards, after the incident. Okay. Uh, is this an accurate screenshot of how you looked after the SUV came through? Yes. Move exhibit 40 into evidence and ask to publish. Exhibit 40 is received, permission to publish is granted, similar to one of the prior uh, exhibits. You'll notice there are some comments on the right-hand side. The jury is instructed to disregard those uh, when considering this exhibit. Thank you. Could we zoom in on the middle of this, please? Once again, Mr. Ramirez, if you see yourself, could you please circle up you yourself for us? Thank you. And do you see Isaac in this screenshot? I don't. Okay. Uh, we can clear that and zoom back out. Thank you. Thank you. Last exhibit, because you just said that. We'll take that up outside the presence of the jury. Don't let me forget. All, All right. right. Then uh, go ahead if you have any cross for this witness. Um, you stated that you went to the urgent care in Pewaukee the next day. Would that be fair to say? Yes, it is. Um, what caused the day delay? As I was um, trying to find my other child who was at the parade but not with, like, right with me, among all the... Um, other people that were injured I was able to see how much how many people were on the ground needing immediate help how much blood was on the ground at that time that I chose to wait until the next day since um, I knew I was hurt but I did not need immediate attention as other people did so you had went home for the evening and decided to just go to the urgent care the next day yes so from your recollection you weren't in need of immediate medical attention i was in need of medical attention but not immediately any reason why you didn't take uh, your son to seek immediate attention? He was able to. Um, he was able to walk out of there with me. He was limping, but he was able to walk out of there with me. So that's why we decided to wait until the next day. Do you recall giving an interview with a detective agent? I remember giving an um, interview. I don't recall his name. Do you recall the date that you gave the interview? I can't remember. Was it a few days after the incident, a week, or? It was a few days after. I cannot remember the exact date. Any idea why it took a few days to make a report? We were, um, we were in touch right away. It just took a few days for us to set up the interview. Did you uh, seek to make a report the evening of the incident? No. Any reason why? I was in shock. So at the time you didn't you didn't feel like you needed to make a report immediately, would that be fair to say? As I said before, I was in shock. I um I got home with a um basically mental breakdown. So I was crying when I got home. I did not think of anything else. Uh, you stated your uh, boyfriend was uh, with you that, that evening. Would that be fair to say? Yes. 
Um, do you know if he was injured in any way? He was not. You stated that you heard him saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you know where he went from that moment? He proceeded to m move backwards to um, not get hurt. In the videos that you saw, do you, did you see him in the video anywhere? I can't remember. So it would be fair to say that you couldn't see him in the videos that you just saw like two, three minutes ago? I could see myself and Isaac. I remember what we were wearing. I cannot remember what he was wearing. Any reason why you remember what you and your son was wearing, but not your boyfriend who was present with you at the incident? Because I'm the one that dresses myself and my child. I don't know what he wears at that time, at any time. Do you remember seeing him after the, directly after the incident? I do. Did he leave with you when you left to go home? He did, yes. And you were also there with um, other children yes. of yours, correct? Yes. Were any of those children hurt in the incident? Just um, scrapes from uh, moving out of the way, but not hurt by the vehicle. So they weren't struck by the vehicle to your knowledge? They were not. <laughs> Do you recall where they were when the vehicle passed you? Um, where they were exactly when the vehicle passed, um, I know that they were to the right of me. I, um, I believe they were behind me at the time. Do you know about how far approximately from you they were? I do not. Do you remember uh, if you were next to a, a intersection or a cross street? To the left, to the left of me, um, there was an inter intersection. I was not directly at the intersection, as there were more people to the left of me. Do you remember what intersection that was? Um. It, as I have stated before, um, I can't remember exactly which intersection it was. I just remember being across the street from um, Chef Pam's kitchen. Um, do we have Exhibit 15, I believe it is? Yeah. Can you pull that up for me? Permission granted. Can you zoom in a little bit? Will you pull something on the big screen? Okay? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It comes up on our screens prior to anyone else, so. There you go. Is it zoomed in enough? Yeah. Um, can you see the screen right now in front of you? Yes. Can you make out uh, your names on that screen? Yes. Can you see the black line pointing to a star? I can. Where would you estimate that is? That looks like it's on um, Main Street and Broadway. So it's, it would be fair to say that that cross street was in fact Broadway? Yes. Can the record reflect that the cross street of Broadway is identified? Okay. The record will still reflect. Do you see the red line right there 
under the star inside of the uh, police badge emblem? Yes. Do you know what that red line indicates? I do not. Do you know if there was a barrier at that intersection? I remember seeing barriers. I cannot recall if there was one at that intersection. Do you recall where you, where you saw the barriers at? I don't recall. Did you see the, the barriers anywhere in your vicinity, your immediate vicinity where you were stationed at? Like I said, I can't remember. <clears throat> Do you recall when you first, oh, you can pull this down, I'm sorry. Thank you. Take that off the screen. Do you recall what you were, oh, let me back up. Do you recall seeing the vehicle approach? I do. Uh, did the vehicle, Strike that. Um, were you able to estimate how fast the vehicle was traveling at that point when it was approaching you? I wouldn't know how fast it was traveling. Did you make out <coughs> the make and model of the vehicle that was approaching? All I remember is there was a red SUV. I can't remember what I what the. I wasn't able to see what the make and model was. Did you see the driver? I did not. Were there any tents to the vehicle that, that you recall? I can't remember. <coughs> did you catch the license place number? I did not. Did you observe the vehicle strike anyone before it got to you? Yes, I did. After it passed you? Before it passed me. After it passed you? I want to ask the question more fully so it's clear. Did you observe the, the vehicle strike anyone once it passed you? I did not. Do you recall your boyfriend taking a, a video of the incident? Yes, I do. Have you seen that video? Um, yes, I have. Was that video uh, given to any law enforcement that you recall? It was not. Any reason why? Because when the vehicle came towards us, it um, was moving way too much because of him moving back, and it was too blurry to see anything. So it would be fair to say the video was pretty much disregarded at that point? Yes. Any reason why it would be disregarded? You could hear the screaming, but as I said, you cannot see anything. So it was disregarded. It's fair to say it was disregarded because the video, in fact, could could not. You couldn't see anything from the video. Yes. When you and your son were treated for your injuries at urgent care in Pewaukee, about how long did the treatment last before you were discharged? 
we were there for at least an hour. Why so briefly? Grounds. Argumentative. Sustained. Were you given any uh, pain medication during it, during your treatment? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Um, overruled. She may answer. I was not. Do you know if uh, your, your son was given any pain medication at that time? No, he was not. Do you recall it being uh, pretty loud out there that, that evening? Yes, I do. Uh, pretty windy, pretty cold? I can't remember. It'd be fair to say it was chilly enough to wear a, a jacket or a coat. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Would it be fair to say that maybe it was a little, it was windy enough to wear a, a winter cap? Yes. Do you recall if you were wearing a winter cap? I do. And do you recall if you had it pulled low, possibly over your ears? No. You don't recall? I... I'm sorry, I didn't know what the note was to, that's why. Um, I was wearing a, um, I was wearing a headband. I was not re wearing a, um, a cap. It'd be fair to just say that you just said you was wearing a cap. No, you asked if I recalled if I was wearing one. I said, yes, I recall. That you were wearing a cap. I recall if I was, and it was a winter headband. I might, I might've been, I might've been confused. I apologize. Ask the next question, please. I don't consent to that name, Your Honor, for the record. <coughs> Do you recall if anyone else she was with was wearing a, a winter cap? I don't recall. After your initial uh, treatment at uh, Urgent Care in Pewaukee, did you receive any more treatment after that? Yes, I did. Did your son receive any more treatment after that? <coughs> he did not. No further questions. Any redirect? On cross-examination, you testified that you saw other people get struck before the SUV got to you and your family, right? Yes. What group in the parade was in front of you at the moment that the SUV got to your family? Extreme Dance. Did you see those girls get hit? I did. Did you see the aftermath after the SUV went through the, that area? Yes, I did. Based on what you saw with those girls getting hit, if you and Isaac had been standing 18 inches to the north, do you think you would have delayed until the next day to seek medical treatment? Jackson, that's sub subjective. Sustained. I don't have anything else for this witness. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You may step down. All right, we will at least stop with testimony for the day. I do have the instruction to read to the jury. And then once I'm done doing that, you'll be excused for the day. Do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case until all the evidence is presented and I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else 
until your final deliberations in the jury room. This order is not limited to face-to-face -face conversations. It also extends to all forms of electronic communications. Do not use any electronic devices such as a mobile phone or computer, text or instant messaging or social networking sites to send or receive any information about this case or your experience as a juror. If you come in contact with the parties, lawyers, interpreters, or witnesses, do not speak with them. For their part, the parties, lawyers, interpreters, and witnesses will not contact or speak with the jurors. Do not listen to any conversation about this case. Do not research any information that you personally think might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. Do not investigate this case on your own or visit the scene, either in person or by electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports on radio, television, over the internet, or any other ap electronic application or tool about this trial. Do not consult dictionaries, computers, electronic applications, social media, the internet, or other reference materials for additional information. Do not seek information regarding the public records of any party or witness in this case. Any information you obtain outside the courtroom could be misleading, inaccurate, or incomplete. Relying on this information is unfair because the parties would not have an opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. Do not communicate with anyone about this trial or your experience as a juror while you are serving on this jury. Do not use a computer, cell phone, or other electronic device, including personal wearable electronics applications or tools with communication capabilities to share any information about this case. For example, do not communicate by telephone, blog post, email, text message, instant message, social media post, or in any other way on or off the computer. Do not permit anyone to communicate with you about this matter, either in person, electronically, or by any other means. If anyone does so, despite your telling them not to, you should report that to me. I appreciate that it is tempting when you go home in the evening to discuss this case with another member of your household, but you may not do so. This case must be decided by you, the jurors, based on the evidence presented in this courtroom. People not serving on this jury have not heard the evidence, and it is improper for them to influence your deliberations and decision in this case. After this trial is completed, you are free to communicate with anyone in any manner. These rules are intended to assure that jurors remain impartial throughout the trial. If any juror has reason to believe that another juror has violated these rules, you should report that to me. If jurors do not comply with these rules, it could result in a new trial involving additional time and significant expense to the parties and the taxpayers. You are to decide the case solely on the evidence offered and received at trial. With that, you are excused for the day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. All rise for the jury, please. All right, thank you. Please be seated. All right, Mr. Brooks, I cut you off because I wanted you to raise whatever the issue was outside the presence of the jury. I don't know if you had a question or an objection or a comment, but go ahead. Um, I forgot what you, <laughs> I forgot what part you cut me off on. Well, it had to do with the, uh, one of the exhibits, and it's the second time it's happened where I've dis I've told the jury to disregard comments that are visible on the exhibit. Yeah, um, is it a way that that, I mean, because it's, it was, that was the one that was the steel frame, right? Correct. We've seen it before on the video. Can I cut that part out so that way it just make it easier? So at this point, 
um, the exhibits have been received, I've told them to disregard it. What, what may happen is ultimately when they're deliberating, they may ask to see exhibits. And if that happens, uh, then I'll have to make a determination about whether those exhibits are given to the jurors. There might be copies that are there um, or shown if, if that's uh, the type of exhibit we're talking about and then we'll go from there. So it's a little bit premature, but um, I hope that answers your question. I, I do believe you were, you were more than clear when you told them to disregard it. So you, that part was definitely clear. And the, the worry would be if they were shown that in deliberations. We'll cross that bridge if and when it becomes an issue. Yeah, I, I just don't want it to. I understand. Just for the record, we're talking about Exhibit 40. That's the exhibit uh, that Mr. Brooks, <laughs> excuse me, the defendant subjected to, uh, and that we put on a pause until the jury was out of the room. It was Exhibit 40. You were instructed the jury to disregard the comments on the right. I have a note. I'll have to look back through my notes on this happened another time, and it may have been maybe the same. I think it's the video that this screenshot came from. Exactly. All right. Um, then, did, does the state have any information for me about uh, the witness and whether you'll need the interpreter for tomorrow? No, we don't, do not believe we will need the interpreter for any of the state's witnesses, Your Honor. We did secure uh, David Marquez, I'm sorry, Juan Marquez to be here at noon so that as soon as we start from the afternoon break, we could take his testimony out of order. All right. Mr. Brooks, do you understand that? No, <laughs> but... Uh, well, let me advise you, sir, that since there's the need for an interpreter and this court had been going through making, not myself, but the clerk's office to make arrangements as it relates to this interpreter, um, I'm going to uh, have you call that witness. It will be out of order. That's not unusual. That happens sometimes, but we at least have that um, witness available starting at noon. I, if all goes well, we'll take an early lunch about 1130. We'll take an hour and then we'll put Mr. Marquez on at 1230. You'll do the initial questioning. The state will then do the cross. Okay. Would you hear me advise you of that? <laughs> I, I'm informed. All right. And then the other thing I just want to put on uh, the record um, today is that again Mr. Brooks does not have the headphones on. I did not notice any apparent difficulties with your hearing. Um, I wanted to uh, also make a record that especially as it relates to the cross-examination of Detective Carpenter which I would describe as a technical um, expert witness um, there was some very articulate, clear, cogent, and salient questions were asked by Mr. Brooks, especially regarding when the technology was obtained. He questioned him about such, about such topics as the, uh, it was a live case and what that meant, um, the reliability of the software, the equipment, even the financial uh, issues, not issues, but just how it was obtained, his training, his experience. Um, asking questions regarding uh, did he provide, for example, uh, speed analysis for any other ca cases and things of that nature. Uh, you're certainly questioning other witnesses about whether they've watched videos previously that would go, you know, to their uh, credibility, which is ultimately a jury determination. But um, I just wanted to uh, put that on the record and commend you for that. Um, any other issues from either party uh, today? Um, you, sir? We still got the issue about the uh, the 13th subpoena. So uh, my understanding is you filled it out or do you need to fill it out? It's been filled out. I yes, just I just wanted to know. I didn't know when we, it was going to be addressed. And so my, my understanding, and let me confer with the state, did, did the subpoena get turned over to the state? The I 13th subpoena. I don't believe it has, no. It's... It's the witness is the one who the state previously advised us was lived out of state. That's the person we're talking about, correct? And, and that's the issue. 
So the state's not obligated. I'm just going to cut to the chase. The state's not obligated to make any kind of travel arrangements or otherwise serve the subpoena on someone who's out of state. There's procedures in the statutes. I'm not going to lay those out for you. Um, this is one of those things I'd refer you back to when uh, we went through the waiver of right to attorney form and about how the court can't explain procedure or the law that you're put in the same position as an attorney who's been practicing here in the state of Wisconsin. Um, I am not going to require the state to make arrangements for an out of state witness that falls on you. I have to be licensed to be held to the same standard as a licensed attorney. I don't want to get into that because I don't want I don't want you to think I'm trying to argue. I disagree with your argue. legal assessment, sir. So well, your objections noted for the record. Well, I'm, I'm, um, but you're a party to this case, sir, and parties I, that are self-represented can do things uh, that attorneys can do. A party doesn't need an attorney, for example, to secure a subpoena. So. With that, I believe that addresses the 13th subpoena. Um, any other issues? Uh... I, I intended to have 13 witnesses. So if I'm not obviously not able to call the 13th witness, how do I get my 13th witness? I can't answer that, sir. Would I still be able to have a 13th witness? You have to name the person the due date was on Monday. I, so, I, who would be your 13th witness then, sir? I would have to look on my original witness list to get the 13th witness. I know that was my target, was 13. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll let you look through that tonight, and you can advise us in the morning. And if the state wants to object, they can advise me then. But you're going to have to fill out another subpoena then. That, that's fair. And that's fair. I can't promise that they'll be able to do that, but we'll see what they have to say tomorrow morning. I do want to state also for the record, why I'm able to hear you very well is because I'm actually in the courtroom with you, which I have been the last few days, which is breath of fresh air. I would um, agree with that assessment, sir. That's why I'm able to, to hear much more clearly. All right. Thank you for making that record. I appreciate it. Any other issues uh, from the state? Nothing, Judge. Thank you. All right. We'll see everyone then tomorrow morning at 830. We are in recess for the day.